Welcome back. Today, I will talk about a drama film from 2006 titled The Queen, based on a true story. Without further ado, let's get started. The movie begins with Queen Elizabeth seeing the news about Tony Blair's victory in the elections of 1997. He has become the first Labour Party leader to be elected as Prime Minister of the UK in 18 years. The Queen speaks with the artist while sitting for an official picture and laments being unable to cast a ballot. She is hesitant about the new Prime Minister and his commitment to modernise the nation. Although she doesn't seem to like the newly elected Prime Minister, he is elected by the country for which the Queen has to invite him to the palace. Arriving at Buckingham Palace, Tony and his wife, Mrs Blair, are taken to the Queen's office, where they will meet the Queen. After exchanging handshakes with Tony, the Queen follows tradition and inquires if he wants to form a government in her name. When Tony answers yes, Mrs. Blair is called into the room, where she faces it challenging to bow before the Queen. Their conversation is cut short when the Queen's private secretary, Robin Jandrin, enters the room and informs her about an emergency. As told by the butler, Mr. and Mrs. Blair leave the room without facing their backs to the Queen. Queen and the Blairs do not seem to enjoy each other's company. On the other hand, Princess Diana gets embroiled in a controversy as she sailed out into the Mediterranean in one of Mr. Muhammad al fayds yachts. His son and the billionaire Egyptian film producer, Dodi Fade, share a relationship with the Princess of Wales. Every news channel shows photographs from their Paris holiday, making Diana's life even more exhausting. When Diana leaves the airport with Dodi and the driver, Henry Paul, the car meets an accident, crushing the passengers badly. While Diana is transferred to the hospital for medical assistance, Henry and Diana's boyfriend, Dodi, die on the spot. When the French government informs Robin about the accident, he rushes into the castle and tells the Queen and Prince Philip about the tragic incident. When the royal family turns on the TV, the media states that Princess Diana is still in ICU with a concussion, broken arm and severe chest wounds. The family is devastated to hear about the horrible accident, but they suggest not waking up the kids until they know more about Diana's health. When Prince Charles talks about going to Paris on a private jet, the Queen and her husband disagree with him as Diana is no longer a member of the royal family because she divorced Charles a year ago. However, Prince Charles thinks that Diana is still the mother of his children and has the right to get treated well by the royals. Soon, Robin gets a call from the British Embassy in France, which tells him about Lady Diana's painful demise. After informing the royals, Robin tells Prince Charles, who doesn't seem to handle the situation quite well. Prime Minister Tony Blair cancels the conferences from the week and tells his strategist, Alastair Campbell, that he will share a statement with the public tomorrow, for which Alastair already has some pretty good ideas. After telling Prince William and Harry about their mother, Charles informs his mother that now he will be using his own plane to get the body of England's future king's mother. As Queen sits in her chair to write her diary, Prince Philip's approaches and informs her about her sister from Tuscany, who has just called and stated that Princess Diana is more annoying dead than alive. The Queen advises her husband to be careful around the boys so they wouldn't hear him talk like that. The following morning, Diana's brother, Charles Spencer, addresses the press by saying that he always believed that the press would kill his sister in the end but never imagined they would take such a direct hand in her death. While Alistair is talking to Tony on the phone, he thinks that the Queen might have greased the brakes to get rid of Diana. Tony gets a call from the palace expressing his sorrow for the loss. Tony wants to know if the Queen intends to make an appearance or a statement about the incident. However, according to the Queen, no member of the royal family will speak publicly as this is a private matter. Moreover, she tells Tony that the Spencer family wishes to arrange a private funeral with a memorial service to follow. The Queen hangs up the phone, after which Tony tells his wife that the royals have already destroyed Diana's life, but they shouldn't ruin her death. Later at the press talk, Tony addresses the British nation and states that Princess Diana touched the life of Britain and people around the world, which is why she was the people's princess. After the address, the phrase rapidly gains popularity, making everyone cry about Diana's painful sudden death. Lord Erli, who is in charge of Diana's funeral and is the palace's Lord Chamberlain calls PM Tony for a suggestion. He proposes to hold a meeting tomorrow at Buckingham Palace with officials from all three castles, representatives of the Spencer family and Prime Minister's members to decide whether the funeral should be private or public. An aircraft of the Queen's flight brings the princess's body home, where the Prime Minister is gathered with his government members to salute her. As Prince Charles talks about how everyone in Paris stood up in respect as they drove past them, Prime Minister suggests arranging the funeral publicly. Prince Charles wants the same, but he thinks his mother follows the old tradition, which should be replaced by modern ethics and values. Millions of people arrive at Buckingham and Kensington Palaces the whole week in an outpouring of sadness. As people send flowers and heartfelt messages for Diana, a meeting under Lord Airlies takes place for the funeral decision. 
Later, Robin informs the Queen that Lord Chamberlain and other members suggest arranging a public funeral based on the Tay Bridge plan for Queen Elizabeth's funeral. Unwillingly, the Queen has to accept the decision. Later, Prince Charles's private secretary, Stephen Lamport, calls PM Tony and thanks him on His Majesty's behalf. Tony still thinks that is why Prince Charles wants to be with him during the ceremonies. While going for stalking, Charles tells her mother how wonderful Diana was and how protected she was a good mother. To avoid the unwanted conversation, she steps out of the car and decides to go back to the palace. The royals face another problem when British people talk about the flag above Buckingham Palace, which they think should be flying at half-mast. When the Queen tells the royals about Tony's concern about this situation, Prince Philip gets infuriated because the flag only flies to denote the presence of the monarch. As Queen is not in the palace, the flagpole is bare as it should be. However, Prince Charles thinks they have to be flexible in the situations like this. Tony Blair calls again and informs the Queen that his advisers have seen a rage in people. He thinks they should not only fly the flag on Buckingham Palace, but also take their first flight to London to comfort their people with their grief. The Queen is still adamant about not doing anything he has suggested because she wants private mourning, which is what the rest of the world admires them for. Later, Robin calls Tony and calms him down after the Queen's harsh reaction to his statement. According to him, the Queen is shocked as she has seen the severe public response for the first time since the abdication. Tony says he will try his best to help the royal get out of the press headlines. Even after Tony's statement, the people still think Queen should be in London. Seeing the British people against her, the Queen gets more worried than ever. The rage has escalated to the extent that people are planning to abolish the monarchy altogether. To avoid a disaster, Tony advises the Queen to make a live statement via live television and pay respect in person over Diana's coffin. Instead of convincing the Queen to accept the advice, the Queen's mother wants her to use her powers and never bow before the authorities. After thinking a lot about the situation, the Queen finally decides to follow the instructions given by the Prime Minister. When Alistair talks more rough and wrong about the Queen and blames her for everything, Prime Minister Tony gets infuriated and states that the Queen has been doing the job for the last 50 years with dignity and respect. According to him, she doesn't deserve what people are thinking about her. After visiting the people at the Balmoral Castle, the Queen takes the plane on Friday to London at Buckingham Palace, where she records her statement on Diana's death. Later, Diana's coffin is taken to Kensington Palace from St. James Palace before her burial. On the day of the burial, not only TV stars, but also charity heads and other people with whom Diana was close joined the royal family in their grief. Blair visits Buckingham Palace for a weekly meeting two months later. The Queen has recovered some of her lost popularity, but she still feels that she was never hated, but Diana's death made the circumstances compelled one out of four Britain hate the Queen. But after Queen's presence in Buckingham Palace, the people started respecting the Queen again as they always did. The movie ends with Queen and Mr. Tony Blair walking outside for fresh air, where she claims that the monarchy must modernize. If you have already watched this movie, share your reviews with us in the comments below. Before you go, make sure to like this video and subscribe.